The Bible says, faith without works is dead. I'm going to say it again. The Bible says, faith without works is dead. So all of us should be doing something. All of us should be doing something. All of us should be focusing on something each and every day. See, and, and I'm going to tell you now, you know, uh, the Bible says apart from God, we can do nothing but with him, all things are possible. My brothers and sisters, understand, faith without works is dead. Dead. You have no faith if you're not doing something. Are you hearing me? So we have to be able to, to, to operate in that in that arena where we're exercising our gifts, our talents, our skills, and our abilities. Man. Oh, man. I tell you every day, you're amazing. You are amazing. And I don't say it because it sounds good. I don't say it because, you know, you know, because I want to puff you up or make you feel, you know, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Man, you are amazing. You're an amazing woman of God. You are an amazing man of God. An amazing mother. Lord Jesus, you had to do this by yourself. Raise them kids. Because he wasn't there. You had to do this by yourself as a man because you didn't know who your dad was or you, you know, you, 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 you came up in a struggle. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't grow up with a with a with a silver spoon, golden spoon in your mouth. You didn't sit at the best of tables. You didn't live in the best of homes or in the best of neighborhoods. But 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 guess what? You are still here. And if it had not been for the Lord on your side, so so let me tell you now, let me tell you this now. Your thoughts have turned you into the person you are today. I'm going to say it again. Your thoughts have turned you into the person you are today. Man, each and every one of us have been guided, have been directed by our thoughts. By our thoughts. Your thoughts. Man. See, and, see, and, and, you, and you have to be able to look at what you're focusing on mainly during the course of each in every day. We live our life one day at a time. And it's so very important that you pay attention to the thoughts that you're entertaining throughout the course of a day. Man, and this is why I want to start my day off with Jesus. This is why I can tell you today, I feel good. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'm going to praise him. I'm going to magnify him. I'm going to lift him up. I'm going to share this gospel with somebody. I'm going to tell a dying world about a living Savior. I'm talking about the one who's come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Thank you, Jesus. Our thoughts, my God, we're traveling down this highway called life, and we're not even thinking about what we're thinking about. We just drifting, drifting and wondering why we, you know, why we're why we're not accomplishing or why we're not seeing the manifestation of these dreams or these promises or these things that we're carrying in our spirit, in our hearts. Why? Because we're not paying attention to our thoughts. You have to pay attention to your thoughts. My theme for today, pay attention to your thoughts. You have to pay attention to your thoughts. Man, I mean, it's... What the Bible say, as a man thinketh in his heart, so are they. Proverbs 27 and no 23. Proverbs 23 and 7. For as a person thinks in their heart, so are they. In other words, so are you and or so shall you become. So it's so very important that we're paying attention to our thoughts. So very important that we're not giving place to the enemy. So very important that we stay in the word of God. So very important that we stay around healthy people. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. You know, and we as a people have to be able to receive 
constructive criticism. <laughs> you have to, you know, if I have me some, if, 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 if you're a friend of mine and you see me living or doing something that is not appropriate, you should, you know, as a friend, you should want to say something. As a friend, you should want to, hey, look here, man, you better than that. Sister girl, you better than that. And I shouldn't be so thin-skinned that I can't receive that coming from someone that loved me, somebody that care about me, somebody that want the best for me. See, 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 but you got to be able to see how the enemy want to what? Divide and conquer. We have to be able to think about what we're thinking about because your thoughts are guiding you. Your thoughts are taking you in a direction either towards that which is better, that which is greater, or is taking you to a place where you just in jail. You on lockdown. You on lockdown. It's amazing. You can be on lockdown and not even know it. Lord Jesus. You are on lockdown and not even going to work every day. You're interacting with people, interacting with family, but still on lockdown and don't even know it. Why? Because you're not paying attention to your thoughts. Because as a person thinks in their heart, what the Bible say about the heart, hide the word in your heart. Why? Because out of the heart comes the issues of life. Those issues you're dealing with is coming from the heart. Those things that are in your heart is the things that you're going to live, the things that you're going to believe, the things that you're going to do. Matter of fact, uh, the author of that book, uh, As a, a Man Think of, uh, James Allen, he wrote something that I want to share with you this morning. I think it's very appropriate for what we're talking about today. Here's what it says. As a being of power, what he said, as a human being, as someone of power, intelligence and love in the lord of your own thoughts you hold the key to every situation listen to me now you hold the key to every situation and contains within yourself that transforming and regenerative agency by which you may make yourself what you will to be lord jesus my brother my sister luke luke 10 19 i give you power the lord says he's given you power to become a jesus an agent of change become that man to become that woman to become that individual to become that mother to become that friend to become that saint lord jesus you are amazing. The Bible says in Pro Proverbs 4 and 23, keep your heart with all diligence. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it springs the issues of life. You see what goes up in the mind, the, the thoughts that we're entertaining is going to eventually filter down into our hearts. It's going to work its way down into our hearts and it's so very important that you're paying attention to the 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 the, the let's just say the 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 thoughts the, the 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 information that you're gathering the information that you're receiving because what you receive in the mind is going to work its way down into your heart and then look what he goes on to say in proverb 4 and 26 ponder ponder in other words think about Ponder the path of your feet. You know, because we can say one thing out of our mouth, but our feet can take us in another direction, away from what we're speaking, away from what we're saying. And let all your ways be established. I want to be established in the things of God. I know there's some people in the world that don't want to hear this, don't want to receive this gospel. But when I think about what the Lord has done for me, when I think about where he brought me from, from the brink of death, are you hearing me? Every one of us, my God, my God, have a testimony. Why? Because if it had not been for the Lord on your side, I'm talking about a God that is able to do, oh my God, 
beyond what you can imagine, beyond what you can think, uh, beyond what you can want, but beyond what you can believe. I'm talking about a God that can do anything but fail. And he's telling you on this morning, ponder the path of your feet, Lord Jesus. Woo. And let all your ways be established. And, and when we say established now, you want to be established in the things of God. See, as a man of God, as a woman of God, uh, I'm not just going to talk the talk. I'm going to walk the walk. Uh, I'm going. I'm going to be that. I'm going to be. I'm going to become that man God sent me here to be. Uh, I'm not going to say it's going to be easy uh, because I realize that weeping may endure for a night. And every one of us is going to go through something that's going to put some tears in your eyes. And now and then you're going to deal with something that's going to keep you up at night. Uh, and now and then you're going to deal. Oh, Lord, you, are, are you hearing me this morning? But I'm here to tell you today that God is good. Uh, I'm here to tell you today, in spite of what you're going through, in spite of what you're dealing with, hold on, my sister. Hold on, my brother. God's got you. Uh, he's a way maker. He's a heart fixer. And he's a mind regulator. I'm talking about a God, my God, my God. Uh, he's not that far, my God. Uh, he's not that far from you uh, that he can't hear you cry. Uh, he's not that far from you that he don't know what you're going through. God is with you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Uh, my God, my God. Uh, and I don't know about you, but I'm here to tell you, thank you, Jesus. Uh, I'm thanking him, my God, for another day, uh, a day in which I've never seen before. See, because understand this now, if you have a, 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 a unclean, in other words, if you have a dirty mind, a dirty mind, Lord Jesus, guess what you're going to project on your heart? That dirty stuff. That dirty stuff, that stuff that's not clean. <laughs> See, and an unclean mind will give you an unclean heart. And what will that do? Lead to an unclean life. We're talking about something that is unhealthy. And you have to be able to pay attention to your thoughts because your thoughts are guiding, your thoughts are directing. Man, Whew. you know, I think I made mention on yesterday, you know, you know, people walking around with their eyes wide shut. I mean, they wide open. You can see what's going on, but you don't see what's going on in the spirit. See, and you want to be able, Lord Jesus, purge my heart, clean my heart. Hey, matter of fact, David said, you know, when he found himself in that sin, he said, Lord, create me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. I need you, Lord. I need you. We need God each and every day. Thank you, Jesus. Of course, we're living in a fallen world. You're living in a world where people, oh God, everybody don't care about you. Everybody's not going to love you. Everybody's not going to feel good about you. Everybody's not in your life to support you, to encourage you. But I'm thanking God for Jesus. Uh, I'm thanking God Oh, Lord Jesus, for the people who are praying for me. I thank God for the people who are supporting me. I'm thanking God, my God, for the voice that he's given to me. I didn't, ooh, this was not on my resume. I didn't see this. Mm -mm. I didn't see this when I was out there in the world running around, acting the fool, acting crazy. But God had a plan. Thank you, Jesus. See, and when you submit to God uh, and when you resist the devil, you got to resist the devil. Uh, and if you're going to resist the devil, you got to be willing to fight to the end. I'm here to tell you now. See, in order to be a diamond, you're going to have to be up under some pressure, uh, some extreme pressure if you want to become a diamond. See, in other words, some of us, we want this. We want that. We want to do this. We want to accomplish that. But the real deal is we're not willing to go through the process. Uh, I'm here to tell you, if you want to be a diamond, you got to go through the pressure. You're going to have to experience that furnace of affliction. You're going to have to experience that sickness. You're going to have to experience that something that is designed to take a good man, good woman down. And you got to keep on pressing. Uh, you got to keep walking by faith and not by sight. You got to keep holding to the hand that'll never let you go. I'm talking about a God that is able. I'm talking about a God that loves you more than you can ever love yourself. And anybody else can love you. Man, how can you not love a God like this? Think about it now. How can you not love a God like this? A God who had put up with some stuff because when you was out there doing that, ooh, 
the crazy, doing the nasty, and folk was tough. Well, I can't handle that no more. See, you wouldn't want to be you. You know, come back when you get yourself together. I'm talking about a God that will hold to you, hold to his hands, to God's unchanging hands. He'll never let you go. Thank you, Jesus. He won't turn from you. We'll turn from him before he ever turns from us. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. And he wants you to know a clean heart will give you a clean life. So, you know, we got to get into Philippians, think on those things that are good, those things that have a good report. If there be any virtue, anything good, you got to think about those things that are healthy, those things that are good. And you have to practice that daily. Are you hearing me? See, see, practice don't make perfect, but practice will make you better. See, because as long as you down here on the earth walking around in this body of flesh, you will never be perfect. Uh-uh. But I can tell you, you can be better. Yeah, it's, it's better to be better than to be bitter. You got a lot of bitter folk in the body of Christ. Why? Because they don't want to, they don't want to enter into the process of transformation and change. Uh, they don't want to fully accept this gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, they don't want to digest this word on a daily basis. They don't want to have a daily talk with their Jesus. Uh, they don't want to sit at the feet of the one who's able to pour into them to overflowing. Oh, I come an empty cup before a full fountain and I say, Lord, fill me up. Fill me up and make me a blessing. Don't make me a blessing to me. Make me a blessing to someone else. See, we got to be able to see beyond ourselves. You have to be able to see beyond yourself and say, Lord, thank you, Jesus for another day to get it right, another opportunity to get it right, because I recognize and realize a person's character is shaped by your is shaped by their thoughts. I'm going to say it again. Your character is shaped by your thoughts. Lord, your, oh, Lord, and your character is going to speak now. You, phew, you don't have to say nothing. It's how you carry yourself. It's how you look at people. It's how you smile. Are you hearing me? And sometimes we can kind of be those loose lips, my God, my God. But they say loose lips can sink a ship. We got to be able to listen more than we speak. Man, and we can't allow ourselves to be so thin-skinned, especially when we're dealing with people who care about us. Now, if you don't know the people who should care about you, ooh, Lord Jesus. See, and, and that's the thing now. See, you, you got to know the difference between friends and acquaintances. Oh, God. And then you got to know the difference between people that truly love you. And I mean, love you according to scripture. I'm talking about according to the word. I'm not talking about saying I love you because I'm able to, you know, when you get paid, I'm able to get a couple of dollars from you. Or I can use your car every now and then. Or when I don't have no place to lay my head, you open your door and you'll let me, you know, uh-uh. You only want to use me. You don't love me. You don't even like me. But you like what I have and you want to use what I have. Thank you, Jesus. And some people, whoo, Lord Jesus, they don't know the difference. Why? Because they're walking around with their eyes wide shut. Don't even know they're being used. Don't even know they're being mistreated. Oh my God, don't you know who you are? Don't you know you are amazing? Don't you know you are anointed, appointed, elected, and selected by God? And God has called you at such a time as this to do great and wonderful things. You are amazing, my sister. You are amazing. Ooh. Oh God. Good character is not is not is not something that's gonna happen by chance. It's not something that's just gonna just gonna happen because you 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 want it to happen. This is something. It's it's a byproduct of right thinking. It's a byproduct of right thinking. That's why I say you know you got to practice this stuff here, man. You got to be in the word daily. What you practice makes you better. It doesn't make you perfect, but it will make you better. And if you're not happy with what you're living right now, you have the power, Lord Jesus, you have the power and God has given you the authority to change what you're living. You don't have to live on the down low. You don't have to be unhappy. Happiness is a choice. It's a decision. I choose to be happy. I choose to be blessed. I am somebody because God didn't make no junk. 
when he made me. I don't know who God is speaking to this morning, but he wants you to wake up. Uh, he wants you to shake it off. Uh, he wants you to come to yourself, recognize and realize you are an amazing human being. You are an amazing man of God. You're an amazing woman of God. Oh, the devil thought he had you, but you got away. Did you get away? Did you get, did you really get away? Or are you still dancing with the devil? Lord Jesus, a good character is not a thing of chance. It's a byproduct of right thinking and right believing. Right thinking and right believing. And good character is developed by the continued effort that you put into right thinking. You have, are you hearing me? It's a daily exercise. Don't this think going to church on Sunday going to make you everything all right or make everything all right? Let me put it that way. Excuse me. Uh, whew, I, I'm just so caught up right now because the Lord is speaking to me. See, and you got to be able to see this thing here now. Good character is developed by continue. And I thank God for this platform because it allows me to develop myself. The man I was last year is not the man I am this year. And the man I'm going to be next year, if the Lord bless me to see next year, is not going to be the man you know today. Are you hearing me? Oh, my God. Every rung will take you higher and higher. There's a high calling on your life. Faith without works is dead. And some of us is just sitting around waiting for something to happen, sitting around waiting for Mr. Goodball, sitting around waiting for mama, sitting around a grown man waiting for mama, waiting for the nipple, waiting for, we got to grow up. And we need to know and understand that you have one opportunity to live this life. Every day is another chance to get it right. Man, when I was a child, I thought like a child. But when I became a man, when I became a woman, and let me put it like this, when I became a man of God, when I became a woman of God, I put away the childish things. Saints, we got to put away the childish things, that behavior, those attitudes. We got to put it away. We got to, we got to come to that place where we know who we are in Christ. I'm here to tell you now, you got to know who you are in Christ. Keep your mind stayed on him. Thank you, Jesus. On who? On Christ Jesus. The Bible says if you can keep your mind stayed on him, he will keep you in perfect peace. Perfect peace. My God, my God, there are days, there are times in my life, I just want peace, God. I just want peace. I want some peace when I come home from work. I want some peace when I come home off the streets. I want some peace after the train ride. I want some peace after the bus ride. I want some peace after the car ride because traffic was crazy today. Oh, man, I want some peace from the television. I want some peace from Facebook. I want some peace from TikTok and Twitter. I want some peace from CNN, MSNBC. I want some peace from the news. I want some peace from the world. And then Lord knows, and now and then, I want some peace from my family. But I'm here to tell you, my God, my God, uh, if you can just sit at the feet of Jesus, uh, my, 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 and I don't care what, I don't care what, you, you, I don't care how, how rich, how, how poor, I don't care the color, you, I don't care who you are, every one of us can meet up with him any time of the day or night, thank you, Jesus, uh, he's an ever-present help in the time of trouble and in the time of need. But I don't just want to see him when I have a need. I want to see him, oh, my, in the good times and in the bad times. My, 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 oh, I, I depend upon, my, like, I'm dependent upon him. I can't live my life without him. Saints, I'm here to tell you, Oh, Lord Jesus, uh, oh, keep your mind stayed on him. Matter of fact, look, 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 look what Isaiah 26 and 3 says. Isaiah 26 and 3, it says, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you. See, every, and this is the New Living Translation, you will keep those people in perfect peace, all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. 
See, we got to fix our thoughts. We have to fix our minds. And I, are you hearing me on that word of God? We got to get it fixed. The Bible says, hide the word of God in your heart so you don't sin against God. And then that fourth verse says, oh, I love this now. Trust in the Lord always. Not just sometimes. Not just when you're going through. You got to trust in the Lord always. For the Lord God is the eternal rock. Lord Jesus, on this rock I stand. Thank you, Jesus. All other ground is sinking sand. See, you got to be able to see this thing here now. I, I don't know about you, but I'm going with Jesus. Uh, I'm going with the one who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly. I'm going with the one who's got the master plan. I'm going with the one that loved me more than I love myself. Uh, because look here, you can say, oh, I love me. But look at some of the stuff that we have done to ourselves. Look at some of the stuff we have done to our children. Look at some of the stuff we have done into some of those relationships that we're in. Look at how you have been treated by some folk who told you that they love you. Lord Jesus, man, I've been there. I've been there. I know what, I know what it is to hear those, those nice sounding words that will make you think, oh, you into something. You all right with it. But the real deal is they're acting out in another way. They're projecting something that is not real. You've got to be able to read between the lines. You need to be able to read the writing on the wall. You need to, are you hearing me? Pay attention to your thoughts. Pay attention to your thoughts. A person's thought life will either make them or break them. Your thought life will either make you or break you. Are you hearing me? See, you're going to be made or unmade by your thoughts, your own thoughts. You want to talk about the devil. You can't blame the devil for that. Uh-uh. You have the power. You have the authority. He who Jesus has set free is free indeed. So if you're free now, you're free to think, oh, my God, <laughs> oh, keep your mind stayed on him. You're free to think in a way where I can develop, where I can grow, where I can continue to keep on moving forward and not living in my past. And when I'm talking about living in my past, I'm talking about in the past hurts. Some of us don't know how to get past yesterday. We don't know how to get past yesterday. I mean, five years later still living yesterday, 10 years later, still living in yesterday's past, 20 years later, still living in yesterday's past, still living in the hurt, the pain, in the shame of the past, and wondering why nothing's getting better. Why? Because you're not thinking about what you're thinking about, and you're not paying attention to your thoughts. Man, hey, look here, let me tell you something. Your thoughts are forging weapons that can destroy you when you're not thinking good, when you're not thinking those things that are good, those healthy, virtuous, those things that are, whew, God has given to us to equip us, to, to arm us. Yeah, look here, you are, you are a dangerous human being. The devil know it. The devil know you dangerous. How, how come you don't know you dangerous? You see yourself as somebody less than. You see yourself as somebody not good enough. I'm here to tell you this morning, you are a dangerous mamma jamma. You are, oh Lord, you bad to the bone. I'm here to tell you today, you can do all things through Christ. You are amazing. You are amazing. Don't forge those weapons that's going, hey, you can be your own worst enemy. It is the eye in me. It is the eye in the devil that got him kicked out of, kicked out of heaven because he wanted to be bigger than God. Don't turn yourself into a God. Understand, hey, he's king of kings. You can be a king when you're up under the real king. Are you hearing me? King of king and Lord of lords. Thank you, Jesus. See, your, your thoughts can be a tool that can fashion and, 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 and can fashion and bring about that which is greater, that which is good, that which is, ooh, Lord Jesus. I can't even believe I did that. 
I can't even believe I'm talking like this this morning. Why? Well, if God be for you, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. See, and some of us are not prospering. Why? Because we've given place to the enemy. We've allowed the enemy to run roughshod. We've allowed the enemy to sit on the throne of our hearts. We've allowed the enemy to cause us to doubt. We've allowed the enemy to cause us to operate in fear. Uh-uh, not today, devil. What you got away with yesterday, you're not going to get away today. Uh-uh, I am somebody because God didn't make no junk when he made me. See, those words mean a lot to me because God gave me those words a long time ago and God was able to bring me out of a terrible place. I am somebody because God didn't make no junk when he made me. I know what it is to look in the mirror and see a face looking back at you that you didn't know. And I cried when I saw that face looking back at me because I couldn't believe I did that to myself. I couldn't believe I allowed myself, oh God, to go to that place. But the same God that picked me up, the same God that turned me around, the same God that helped me is the same God that can help you too. Thank you, Jesus. But now you got to want to be helped. Thank you, Jesus. You got to want to be helped. You got to want to be changed. Uh, you got to want to be that new and improved and special edition that God has called you to be. Because understand now, there's not another person on the planet like you. Never was, never will be. You are a unique individual, perfectly designed by God. Did you hear what I said? Perfectly designed by God. God didn't make no mistake when he made you. He knew what he was doing when he put you together. Lord Jesus. And if you find any fault in yourself, it's not because of what he did. It might be because of what you did to yourself. Thank you, Jesus. I got some information today. I see now. Lord, help me. Help a brother. Help a sister. I need you, Jesus. So my thoughts are, can, 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 are like a tool that is shaping and fashioning and, 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 it's going, and is able to bring me into a good life, into a good life. I want the good life. I want the good life. Man, you know, most of our population is working because that's the mindset that we have. We're here to work, you know, but you know something? You got that that 3%, that, 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 that small percentage of people, they're not working, but they're running corporations and they're making millions and billions of dollars. Why? Because they're thinking. They're thinking. They're sitting back and they're thinking. They're coming up with, with ideas. They're coming up with plans. This one thing I do, if you can find that one thing, thing that God has called you to, if you can establish yourself in that one thing, that one thing, whew, whether it's KFC, whether it's Microsoft, whether it's Facebook, whether it's a, a computer, whether it's cars, what, whatever, that one thing, it's in you. You have the ability to write a book. You have the ability to sing songs. You have the ability to preach this gospel. You have the ability to do great and wonderful things. Your testimony is amazing. Man, somebody needs to hear your testimony. Somebody needs to hear your song. Somebody needs to hear your preach word. Somebody need prayer, need to hear you pray over them. My God, my God. Somebody need to hear your encouraging words. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody need to feel your arm around their shoulder. Thank you, Jesus. Are you hearing me today? You are that one that can make a difference. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. See, understand, your plans and ideas, they're like the tools that will come out of a positive mindset, positive mindset, thinking, the way you're thinking. See, you have to be able to see the importance of, of, of paying attention to your thoughts because your thoughts are, thoughts are things. Thoughts will manifest things. Thoughts will bring things into existence. You keep thinking about it long enough, those things that you're thinking about will eventually manifest. See, and, and, and if you want, see, I want to grow up. I want to be a mature man. A mature man of God. 
You should want to become a mature man, a mature woman of God. And it's going to happen when you're exercising those good, clean thoughts, healthy thoughts, those positive thoughts, when you're thinking like a man, thinking like a woman of God, not allowing yourself to be influenced by the things of the world. See, because a mind that is cultivated and cared for will always bring forth those things that are good. Are you hearing me? You got to cultivate. You got to nurture. Are you hearing me? You go, oh, Lord Jesus. Hey, what do it say about a computer? Junk goes in, junk come out. Well, guess what? You better than a computer. You're more intricate. You're, ooh, man, I mean, a computer can't touch you. I don't care how, what a computer can't touch you. I mean, why? Because God made you. And you are so, ooh, Lord Jesus, I can't even find the proper word to describe you outside of the fact that you are amazing, phenomenal, extraordinary. Are you hearing me? And God will use ordinary people to do extraordinary things. But understand, God, oh, Lord, he has to be at the helm. God has to be at the helm. Oh, man, why? Because your mind is like a garden. It's like a garden, and, and, and that garden must be cultivated, got to be weeded, got to pull those weeds out, because those weeds will over, over, overrun, it will kill out, die out, I mean, and it might look good, because that little yellow flower in your garden is a weed. You see those little puff balls in your garden? Guess what? That's a weed. Might look good, but it's a weed. And you need to be able to look, hey, you got some people in your life that might look good, but guess what? They are we. And you need to know the difference. You need to know the difference. In a mind that is cultivated and cared for, ooh, will always bring forth those things that are good. Those things that are good, those things that are pleasing to the eye, those things that will make you feel good about self in the direction of your life. A mind that is neglected will bring forth, as I said, those weeds and those things that should be unwanted in life. I don't. There's some things going on in my. Uh -uh, I don't want that. There's some people I, I, I shouldn't even be hanging out with. Those kind of people. There's some places that I used to go to. I'm not going there no more. Mm -mm, I'm not going there no more. Cause I'm. I, I, I don't drink. Why go to the club? I, well, well, I, I don't, I don't, mm -mm, I, I don't, sm I don't smoke. I don't want to, I'm not going to the, I'm not going to the bar. I'm not going to the, I'm not, there's some, I just can't entertain that no more. I, I, there's some stuff on, 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 on television. I can't look at that no more. Mm -mm. Not going there no more. Not doing that no more. Why? Because I know who I am and I know whose I am. And I know my God, my God, thank you, Jesus. I've been given another chance. To, live it, to, to, to get it right. You know, I, there was something else I ran across. I've, I don't know where I got this. I, I, I just, I write things down that I find that is interesting. And here's something that I grab hold to. And here's what it says. There is no easy road or way out of life. All of us will have to deal with the, with, with the hard times. Hard times and pain will damage you. It will cause you to either be bitter or to be better. See, all of us are gonna deal with some hard times. There's no easy road or easy way out of life. You're gonna deal with some stuff. You're gonna deal with some issues. And this is why it's very important that you pay attention to your thoughts. Pay attention, ooh, Lord Jesus, to those people you even call friends. Huh, that's my friend. Huh, he don't really care about you. She don't really care about you. Who? how many times have you heard I love you? And the very person that told you I love you and I'll be there for you till death do us part? Where they at? Can't find them. But I'm here to tell you today, there's a God that love you. Love you, he, he, he will love you to death. Are you hearing me? And then he will transition with you when you transition into that new, that other life. With, uh, are you hearing me? Because this is not your life. This is not your home. This is not your home. 
And saints, understand this. As a Christian, we have to be able to see that thought and character are one and the same. I'm going to say it again. I'm, end, I'm ending now. I'm ending. I'm ending. As a Christian, you have to be able to see that your thoughts and your character are one and the same. You can't separate the two. You can't separate them. Your thoughts will develop your character. And your character is a sum total of your thoughts. They're one and the same, and you can't separate them. So it, a good person is a good person. Why? Because of their thoughts. Are you hearing me? I don't even want to go to the other side of that. So the real deal is you want to stay, you know, on, 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 on the straight and narrow. See, and that straight and narrow mean, you know, broad is the way that leads to death and destruction, but narrow is the way that leads to life. You're not going to have a lot of friends. You're not going to have a lot of people that care for you. And the people that care for you, care for them. Respect them, love them, treat them the way they're treating you. And, phew, and you need to be able to know the difference. Because what you, you are what you think. I'm going to say that again. You, are, you know that saying, you are what you eat when it comes to food? Junk goes in, junk comes out, you eat eating ice cream in the morning for breakfast and, and candy all through the day, and you're not eating a healthy meal. Before you know it, you don't have no teeth. Before you know it, you're like two tons of fun. You, you know, you, you're going through changes and this and that and that. And that. You're all stressed out. You're worrying about this, worrying about that. Why? Because you're not paying attention. You're not paying attention to your thoughts. And as you are what you think, just like you are what you think, Guess what? You are what you eat. Because, you know, <laughs> as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, and so shall he or she becomes. So my brother, my sister, please pay attention to your thoughts. I'm going to say it again. Please pay attention to your thoughts. To God be the glory. Dear God, dear Father, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you for today. Thank you for this message, Lord God. I pray your strength. I pray your blessing, Father God. You knew what needed to be said today, what needed to be heard. And Father God, I pray, Father God, that I said what needed to be said, Lord God, to, I don't know who you were speaking to, God, but I pray that we were able to grab hold to this message. I pray, Father God, that you have, mm, 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 whew, you have helped that someone, Lord God, that someone that needed to let go of that stinking thinking, that someone that needed to see themselves as not good enough. Lord, we love you today, and we're thanking you today, God, mainly because we know today, Father God, based upon what you said, we know that we are amazing. 